My name is Michelle Hutchison and I'm here to talk to Paul or PC Evans today about his new collection of poetry translations, Grand Larcenies, that's being published by Carcanet Press. And um, Paul, tell me just a little bit about yourself and your writing. But when I was younger, all my um, all my writing heroes were all butch writers like Orwell and, um, and Hemingway. So that's what I wanted to uh, to write like, you know, particularly short stories. Um, but unfortunately, um, when I was trying to write stuff like that, you're so under the influence of these guys that you don't have your own voice. So I literally came up to Amsterdam from Turkey and checked into um, a hotel uh, in the red light district. And um, I thought, come on, you know, forget all this stuff you've learned. It's all derivative nonsense. Just start writing. And out pop poetry. And I was just absolutely stunned. I was like, oh my God. But you recognize it instantly, but you didn't realize you were on that path until it's just stuck in front of you. So, so you've been writing poetry for a long time and how long have you been translating poetry? Um, when you want to write poetry in, um, in a well-grounded way, uh, you study uh, all of the poets. Um, you know, you study their, um, their rhyme techniques and their verse techniques, you study their meter and stuff like that. Um, and lots of poets who want to write in that way, um, they have a lot of uh, juvenile material that they sort of, they copy other people and then they throw it away and they take the lessons from those poets. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that so much. I read the poets I, I loved, like Yeats and, and Pound and Eliot, took the lessons, but then I took some Dutch poems like uh, Martinus Nijhoff, and I actually did the, ju the juvenile material, translating some of their work years and years ago before I could even really speak Dutch. Uh, because an author like Nyhoff is very similar to Yeats in terms of the uh, verse structure and the rhyme patterns. Tell us about Grand Larcenies. Uh, can you show us the book? Yes. There you go. There it is. Looks uh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Good. How many poems are in there? It's difficult to say. Um, it turned out to be a much bigger book than I expected. It's about 224 or five pages uh, mm -hmm. because there's Dutch, there's English, and there's literal translations at the back. Um, I suppose there must be about 50, 55 pages of English in it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there's something that appeals to you know different demographics. You notice in Dutch bookshops, people are like, uh, oh, it's got the Dutch in it as well. You know, it's... Uh, so hopefully it, uh, lots of different kinds of readers will, uh, will be drawn to it. Would you, would you read us your favourite poem from there? Yeah. Um, in your translation. <laughs> there's a um, Dutch poet that um, I, I champion called Hans R. Fleck, and um, he spent most of his life in a, in a madhouse. Um, he was the, the major um, emerging Dutch poet in the 1960s. He was just absolutely brilliant. He published like four collections in, in no time, won all these huge prizes. And then he was taking LSD and he just completely lost his mind that he couldn't form a, a coherent sentence after that. So this locked him up in a, an institution called Birdsong. And the only way that he could communicate was to write in strict rhyme and meter. Um, he couldn't speak, um, he just mumbled nonsense. But when he was writing poetry, um, the structure of um, uh, the, the stanza seemed to order his mind just long enough to finish the poem. Anyway, this is one that uh, I sort of adapted from uh, from one of his poems. His is set in Manila, and I moved it to uh, to Mexico. It's called Angel. No dinero, no dollars, no backsheesh. Each day before dark, me and my hermanito hit the garbage heaps. Sometimes we find small grapefruits that we can eat, table scraps from chic downtown eateries. And for me to work the streets, a pair of laddered tights. Usually it's not much, but it's enough. My hermanito scuffs the dust as he dogs me with his plastic carrier. Then I whip him back early because Pap's got ulcers and Mama's born us a new sister in the barriada beneath the candle and the cross. Then it's Vamanos, slip into a pair of the worn black fishnets and cruise the cantinas on the scarlet streets at night. Mama says that Jesus will grant a good girl dispensation to blow a gringo from the army camp and buy us fresh fish and oil for the lamp for a week or more. I lie in the desierto beneath the Sierra Madre, where we played Hansel and Gretel among the desert McGee's. Mama, why did the soldiers take me? I'm only 13. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Excellent. So we'll, I'll be talking to you some more at Cheltenham's Festival in October. Absolutely. Yeah.
so people can see us talking again at a greater length about this collection. Um, it's available from Carcanet and um, all the rest is, of the information is, is online. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle.